Thank you. Good morning, MCC DC. It's a little cold outside today, but we're glad you're here inside with us in this warmth, spiritual warmth anyway. Please rise as you're able and turn in your hymnal to 126, Angels from the Realms of Glory. which comes in Christ, and we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting, like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come to the promised land. We wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait for the day when we will join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. 
We wait for the day when universal justice for all peoples will indeed be the song of everlasting joy, and that joy will be in each of us. On this day, we remember the spirit who breathes joy into our lives. We light this candle of joy. Again, we welcome you today on this, the third Sunday of Advent. Thank you, and you may be seated. We are so glad that you're here today. If it's your first time at MCCDC, my name's Dwayne, the senior pastor. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you. It's also my honor and privilege to welcome those who are worshiping with us today on live stream, wherever you may be. Know that we are with you. We are where you are, and we are so grateful that you're worshiping with us today. If it is your first time, we do not want to embarrass you, but we do want to welcome you. So if you're comfortable and could just raise your hand high enough for the ushers to see where you are, this applause is to welcome and to greet and to say good morning to everybody. And good morning. My name is Kathy Alexander. I'm the associate pastor, and I also would like to add my voice of welcome. Thank you so much for choosing to worship at MCCDC this morning. And the person who was our visiting, visiting with us today, I would like to just offer a brief word of introduction. We are so blessed and grateful to have uh, worshiping with us and ministering with us today, Asati Nu. She is from uh, Oakland, California, and worships at City of Refuge, which is uh, Bishop Yvette Flanders' church. And so welcome today, uh, and we look forward to the gifts and ministries that you will be sharing with us. We invite you now to just take out your cell phone for a moment to make sure it's on silent, but do check in on Facebook. Do send out a good news Christmas third Sunday of Advent tweet to somebody letting folks know that MCC is the place to be. The place to be awake at 9 a.m. and ready to worship. The place to be God's yes, people. And uh, again, make sure it's on silent so that we can worship today without distraction. Then we invite you to rise as you're able and uh, just introduce yourself to those around you as we greet each other on this third Sunday of Advent, this Sunday of joy. As you return to your seats, please do take your worship folder. In our call to worship, I and Lauren will be ones, and you will be the bold many. With prayerful pleas and Advent songs of longing, we await the birth of God's anointed one. Come, song of heaven, that we might sing a new song. O God, the days are long, yet time is short, as we prepare for the feast of Mary's son. Holy Spirit, come upon us, that we, like Mary, may conceive new life. Show to us also your highly favored ones, how to guard our hearts from noise and hurry's whirl so that we might hear your voice calling our hearts to create an empty space that might be pregnant with heaven's fire. Quiet us within that through your Holy Spirit your word once again may take flesh this time within us as once it did in Holy Mary long advent days ago come oh, holy, holy spirit, spirit come, come. Amen. Amen. amen and our hymn is number 144 hark the herald angels sing 144 
sing glory to the Christ I'll bring peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinner reconcile joyful all you saints arise join the triumph of the skies with the angel host proclaim Christ is born service. We come to a time of prayer and contemplation, a time to bring our hearts and our spirits together in unity before God of our understanding. So let us go to God in prayer. Great and gracious God, loving and powerful God, beautiful and magnificent God, God in us, through us, with us, around us. Gracious God, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day, and thank you for being present here with us. God, you provide all that we need. You fill our spirits with your love and your peace. Help us, O oh God, to take that peace with us, to use that peace and that love in each and every circumstance that we can. Help us to draw closer to you and to each other. And, O oh God, remind us as we make our way in this world. Remind us of your love. Remind us, O oh God, that we are your instruments of peace and joy and hope. Remind us, O oh God, in those circumstances that try our last ever love and nerve. O oh God, Remind us that you are here and what we can be in you. God, thank you. And we pray these things in the name of the Most High, the Holy One. In the name of love, amen. Isaiah 61. One through three. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to those who are poor, to heal broken hearts, to proclaim release to those held captive, and liberation to those in prison, to announce a year of favor from God, and the day of God's vindication to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to give them a wreath of flowers instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of tears, 
and a spirit of praise in place of a spirit of sadness. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and will do this. for the things that you have done yes I'm grateful for the victories we won I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm Grateful, grateful, grateful to know you, Lord. Growing from my heart are the issues of my heart. Is gratefulness. grateful for the things that you have done yes I'm grateful for the victories we won I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm Grateful, grateful, so grateful to know you, Lord. Growing from my heart are the issues of my heart, his gratefulness. Grateful, 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 gratefulness growing from my heart. Grateful, 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 gratefulness. Growing from my heart, grateful, 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 gratefulness. Oh, grateful, 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 grateful. Grateful, 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 gratefulness flowing from my heart are 
the issues of my heart oh, flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. Luke one twenty six through thirty five. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a young woman named Mary. She was engaged to Joseph of the house of David. Upon arriving, the angel said to Mary, Rejoice, highly favored one. God is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mary was deeply troubled by these words, and wondered what the angel's greeting meant. The angel went on to say to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and bear a son, and give him the name Jesus, deliverance. His dignity will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. God will give Jesus the seat of David, his ancestor, to rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will never end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have never been with a man? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and called the Holy One of God. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining it is the night of our dear savior's birth long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth a thrill of hope a weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was born night divine oh night oh night divine led by the light of faith serenely be with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming 
dreaming here came the wise men from the orient land the king of kings lay in the lowly manger in all our trials born to be our friend he knows our need to our weakness no stranger behold your king before the lowly bend behold your king before him bend truly he taught us to love one another his law is love and his gospel is peace change shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name all oppression shall cease sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name christ is the lord the name Forever praise we His power and glory the more proclaim His power and glory more proclaim fall on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night divine oh night when Christ was born, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, O oh, night divine. by beautiful music this morning, that holy night for which we are so grateful, grateful, grateful. In some churches they say it this way, come Holy Spirit, come. In other churches they say it this way, there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party won't stop. <laughs> Now, you may think I have the liturgical calendar mixed up. We don't talk about the Holy Spirit during Advent, do we? We have the wise ones. We have the shepherds. We have the angels. We have Mary and Joseph and, of course, the Christ child. And yet, it wouldn't be Christmas were it not for the Holy Spirit. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High 
will overshadow you. It wouldn't be Christmas without the stories of the angels and the wise ones and the Christ child, and it wouldn't be Christmas without the Holy Spirit. It was the angel Gabriel's promise that moved Mary past her fear and inspired her to believe in impossible dreams. There would be no Christmas without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit conceived a rebirth of salvation through the coming of Emmanuel. So why wait until Pentecost to proclaim the role and the power and the fire of the Holy Spirit? The wind blowing through all seasons and through all times, including this Advent season. We need Christmas now. And in order for us to have Christmas now, we need the Spirit now. The Spirit who breathed through the soul of the prophet Isaiah, saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to those who are poor, to heal the broken hearts, to proclaim release to those held captive, and liberation to those in prison to announce a year of favor from God, to prophesy impossible prophecies. We ready for 2018? Are we ready to believe that 2018, despite all obstacles, can be a year of favor from God? What does it mean to live in the present moment to live in the stream of the ancient prophets and to believe that the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. I think first of all it means to believe that the Spirit inside of us is greater than the oppression outside of us. The Spirit inside of us, the Holy Spirit conceived in us like Mary is greater than any force from the outside, greater than any circumstance. It is that Spirit inside us, that Christmas Spirit, that Pentecost Spirit, that gives us the power and the voice to stand against whatever it is we may need to stand against, including this day. This day, when tax reform is actually tax oppression. It means to continue to believe and to never give up. It means to say stop, stop to the preschool to prison pipeline that we must stand against for liberation and justice, freedom for all. Makes me think of the story that Frank Rogers tells of Mwanda, Mwanda of Zimbabwe, 80-year-old activist getting up each week, each day to hold vigil. At least once a week she would stand outside the local police station. Like those around her, she lived under a dictatorship. Personally, her husband and son were arrested and she never saw them again. Nevertheless, she continued to show up every day because she believed that the power inside of her was greater than the forces outside of her. For three years, she stood vigil, oftentimes enduring public beatings and public strip church at 80 years old. Nevertheless, she showed up, and one day one of the militia said, Why do you keep this up, old woman? You have no hope. We are too strong. We will beat you down until you can't get up, and we will be here to stay. With the fierceness of someone who had endured decades of oppression, had stayed strong. She looked them in the eye and she said, I hope, I still hope, each day I hope. I hope because the power within me is stronger than the power of this world. I believe that God hears the cries of the oppressed and will raise the lowly up. You can beat me down, but I will rise up. I will rise up out of the grave if necessary. The power of justice, the power of God does not die. It cannot be imprisoned. Maybe today, 
maybe in a thousand years, tyranny will fall. And God's righteousness will reign across the land. Moanda, she had the Pentecost spirit. She had the Advent spirit. She had the Christmas spirit. She had the ordinary time, everyday spirit. The power inside of her was greater than the forces around her, and so it is true for us. What does it mean to live in the anointing of the Holy Spirit today? It means we re realize that power and draw on that power with every prayer and every breath. It also means that the Holy Spirit is birthing something new and unexpected. That power is always shifting and changing. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy and called the Holy One of God. Mary heard the voice of the angel doing something new and powerful in her. And it makes me wonder, what would happen if Mary had not trusted Gabriel and the Holy Spirit. I believe that God always gives us a choice, and I believe that Mary, too, had a choice. What if Mary had quenched this spirit, had ignored this voice? Our scripture today from 1 Thessalonians 5.19 invites us to openness with the caution about quenching the spirit. It simply says, do not quench the spirit. I've been thinking about what that means. I think the invitation is to not limit the Spirit, to not undermine the Spirit, to not resist the Spirit. The Spirit is always seeking to birth something new, to break out, to draw us into that power on the inside. We are invited for something new to be birthed for such a time in this. And I believe that's true for us as a congregation as well as individuals. The Holy Spirit is always ready to do something New. Rogers also tells the story of Mike. He is one who absolutely hated the commercialism of Christmas. He just wanted to skip Christmas every year. He liked the spiritual part, but he couldn't stand the commercialism. And so he said to those around them, don't get me anything for Christmas and don't expect me to get you anything for Christmas. His beloved Nan struggled with this attitude. She also wasn't really into the commercialization part, and yet she wanted to celebrate Christmas for the kids and the family. And so she took her beloved's attitude to prayer. And the Holy Spirit gave her an idea, an idea to birth something new related to Christmas. One Christmas morning, as Mike came down to look at the Christmas tree, she pointed to an envelope that she'd placed there, and she said, Mike, that, uh, that's for you. He said, don't you remember? I said, don't get me anything for Christmas. I don't have anything for you. She said, well, just, just open the envelope. So he opened it with a frown on his face. And then he saw that in the, inside the envelope, she had made a commitment in his honor to sew uniforms for a wrestling team in a low-income neighborhood that could not afford to buy uniforms. Well, when she started making the uniforms, pretty soon he was there helping with the sizing. <laughs> soon he was a part of that Christmas project that spilled into the new year. The next year there was another envelope. He opened it. This time it was building birdhouses for a wildlife refuge. And then the next year it was creating a playground for a children's home. And then the next year it was a community garden in a vacant lot. Through the years, he started to love Christmas and look forward to it. And soon it became his favorite occasion. It brought him closer to his beloved Nan, and it brought him closer to his community and neighborhood. There's some irony that one year he passed three days before Christmas, and Nan was grieving. Friends and neighbors had come to help him the grief on Christmas Day, when she went downstairs to look at the tree, there were dozens and dozens of envelopes. And they began to open the envelopes. 
and friends and grandkids and cousins had all made a commitment to do something for their community or their neighborhood or their world in honor of Mike. The Holy Spirit is always seeking to bring to life something new, to transform old attitudes and ways of being into something new and alive and bold and powerful. So on this third Sunday of Advent, we proclaim together, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Repeat after me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And there ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because a Holy Ghost party won't stop. Amen and amen. And so we offer today these waters of baptism, waters of new life and strength and grace. And as you hear the waters pour, may you also hear the voice that the grown-up Jesus heard. You are my own and my beloved, and with you, I am well pleased. Know today that you are God's own and God is pleased with you. We also offer for you today this oil and laying on of hands. In ancient times, it was the oil that was the healing balm of Gilead. It's still a healing oil. And it's also the oil that is the presence of the Holy Spirit. So during this time of response, you're invited to come and receive prayers. You're invited to stay right there where you are in your seats and think about the message today or the songs that you've heard. Spend some time with God if you wish to come and just spend some time alone. Feel free to come and stand near the cross or feel free to come and just touch the waters if you wish to receive a special time just with you and God. This is God's time and it's your time. So I invite you to rise as you're able to think about what God is birthing new in you. Please rise as you are able. Our hymn of response is number 117, Lift Up Your Heads, Almighty Gates, number 117. Spirit, come. We give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Lift up your heads, O mighty gates. 
Behold, the glorious God comes this day and every day. We come to the uh, part of our service as we continue in worship where we celebrate our gifts of our time, our talents, and our treasure. We recognize that God has been so generous to us and we give back a portion of what God has given with our tithes and offerings. I invite the ushers to come forward. Gracious God, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you that we can give back to you during this time of gift giving and gift receiving. Amen. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs. deserve it. You 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 deserve it. to be in relationship with him. 
this celebration at Metropolitan Community Church of Washington, D.C., as in all metropolitan community churches around the world, is invited and open to all. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church to receive these gifts from God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. You loved the world so much you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. He suffered and died for the sin of the world. You raised him from the dead that we too might have new life in him. Therefore, we join your people from all the ages and the whole company of heaven as we join you in this hymn of praise, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And let us pray. Great and gracious God, Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that as we break this bread and as we drink this cup, we too might know the very power and presence of the living Christ. Amen. Amen. On the night before he offered himself up for us, Jesus was gathered together in a room with his friends, his disciples. He took the bread and he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to those present with him, saying, Take eat this is my body which is broken for you when you gather together do this and remember me when the meal had ended as is the custom Jesus took the cup he blessed it he gave it to those present and he said this is the cup of my love the cup of the new and the everlasting covenant when you drink from this cup drink fully drink it to the dregs enjoy this cup is poured out for you when you do this, remember me. Let us then proclaim what is the victory of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Hallelujah. My siblings, the table is set. These are the gifts of God for you, the much beloved people of God. Please come. Our first communion hymn is number 124, Away in a Manger, number 124.
manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky look down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. Number 131, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Gracious God, thank you that we can hear and see the signs of the angels singing. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to rise as you are able, and as you feel comfortable, be in the space of those who are near you, and let us sing and sign the prayer that Jesus taught. Bye. 
Amen, amen. Please be seated. Today at 1230, we will be having our congregational meeting, uh, follow-on congregational meeting, so please plan to uh, come back. Uh, this will be very brief and uh, a single uh, session, a single topic. Also, the next Sunday, can you believe it, is Christmas Eve. Is that right? <laughs> Tell me that's right. <laughs> okay, that's right. On Christmas Eve, we will be having t three services, the 9, the 11, and the 7 p.m. candlelight service. So please plan, if you're in the area, please plan on coming back and lending your voice in silent night as we light the candles of service and praise. And our closing hymn is number 132, Joy to the World. And as you go from this place today, know that you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon you. And the power inside of you is greater than any circumstance around you. And look deep inside because something brand new is being born through the Spirit. Amen and amen.